All right. <laughs> Record on this computer. But it's good because we're live on YouTube. So let me just share this. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, just to back in, yung, I think kung hindi ka kayaanin ng time natin ngayon, we just continue in this uh, Torah portion kasi yung haptaran natin will cover the ending part, yung completion na po ng, ng buong tabernacle. Ah, yung we need to cover until, uh, po, until verse 40. Ah, okay. Uh, kasama right. po ninyo today. So, oh, let's uh, enjoy okay. the time. All right, that's good, that's good. Okay, para hindi ako nagmamadali. <laughs> All right, as you see in your screen, in verse 1 of chapter 35, sabi po dyan, and Moshe gathered. The word gathered there is the word kahal. Now, when we started in uh, March and April, nung nagpapalit tayo ng pangalan, ang nais ko po talagang gamitin, ang first na pangalan is uh, Old Pat's Baptist Kahal. But a lot of people... Uh, will not understand what kahal means. Kaya po naging uh, ekklesia, Old Pass Baptist Ecclesia, or now naging assembly. But uh, kahal is the Hebrew word of ekklesia, and the English word is to gather or to assemble. Alright? Assembly. So basically, why yakhel, and the last part of that, which is why yakhal, is meaning he assembled. Alright? And he Assemble. Yan po yung ibig sabihin ng Torah portion. So, now the question is, what was the purpose of the assembling? At ito po yung napaka-importante na pag-aralan natin ngayon. And huwag niyo pong kakalimutan yung word na kahal na yan because that is the real word na pinanggalingan ng ekklesia na ginawang church. And as I always say, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Bakit? When you say church, ang nasa isip natin ay building. A lot of people would say, hindi, sila, yun yung assembly. Pero hindi natin maaalis sa isip natin pag sinabi natin, punta tayo sa church, ay pupunta tayo doon sa bahay ng Panginoon. Yan nga yung ginagamit natin, di ba? Pag sinabing, uh, sinabi natin, church, yan ay bahay ng Panginoon. But if you go back to original roots of the word church, which is kirke or sirke, which, which, where the root were, uh, which the word circus comes from, the word cirque means the house of gods. Alright? At itong word na ito ay specific na inutos po ni King James. Now listen very carefully because this is King James history. King James version history. And if you find this also in the, uh, you, you can search this in the internet, this is true. Isa po sa mga inutos ni King James. Nung tinatranslate po ang King James version, ay sabi niya, Pag nabasa nyo or nakita nyo yung word na ekklesia or kahal, especially in the New Testament, use the word church. In fact, when uh, William Tyndale, if you go to the William Tyndale uh, translation, even now, pag tinignan nyo po ang kanyang translation of Matthew, is it 18 or 16? When Yahusha said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, the Tyndale version, which is 80% the, the source or yung ginamit na influence ng King James, it says there, I will build my congregation. So the word church is a little leaven that has leavened the whole lump. And I still remember me preaching, kapag hindi ka parte ng church, hindi yun yung biblical. Now I realize the, the name Assemblies of God, the name Assemblies of Believers, mas tama pala. Because in the Old Testament, the word that Yahuwah used, the word that the Scripture uses, is the word kahal, even when it is mentioned in the book of Acts, the church of Moshe in the wilderness, it's the kahal, because you go back to Exodus, ito po yun. Ito po yun nakikita natin sa Exodus chapter 35, and Moshe gathered. Now, Alisin natin yung sa isip natin na pupunta tayo ng church. Remember, when we say assemble, my purpose kung bakit tayo ina-assemble. Alright? Now the question here is, why were they gathered? Why did Yahuwah say, gather the congregation? Gather the people. What was the purpose? First purpose. Chapter 35, 
uh, sorry, chapter 36, it was to offer. All right? To offer. So, bago ko alisin to sa screen nyo, yung assembly, you can see there, uh, kuf, hay, and lamed. All right? Kuf, hay, lamed. Kuf is actually a sunrise or a sunset or a repetition, a daily routine. All right? So, hindi natin alam yan kung pangat o pababa yung araw. But what it shows us, that it's a daily routine. All right? And then you see the hay as a spiritual man. Actually, this is my favorite. Kasi madali siyang i-illustrate. Di ba? Hey. <laughs> Ganon din tayo, di ba? Tumawag ng tao. Hey. <laughs> di ba? So, it's the spiritual man. It's the inner man that's in us. And Lamed uh, is also memorable. Bakit? It's a staff na kung saan ay ginagamit sa ship para pag nawawala yung ship ay pinandudukot. All right? Kinakalawit yung ship sa kanyang leeg para bumalik ka dun sa normal routine nung spiritual man. All right? Very easy to understand. Why did he assemble them? Why were they an assembly? They were an assembly of Yahuwah. All right? So, pag sinabi mong Iglesia ni Cristo, they are an assembly of Mashiach. Okay? So, and it's good to understand, and sabi ko nga sa inyo, try using the Targum for reading. Kasi kung titignan nyo, the Targum is actually an older text than the Masoretic text. Alright? The Masoretic text was only derived, uh, was only naipon lang nila yan, around, I'd say, 600 to 900 AD. But the Targums, which were written in Aramaic and was just translated uh, uh, later into English, see, they, it was actually written from 100 AD to 200 AD. All right, so it's older than the Masoretic text. Bakit ko sinasabi yan? Because the Targum, especially when we read, when we read the Book of Genesis, kadalasan po don ang mention, especially kapag nakipag-usap ang panginoon sa mga tao, lagi pong sinasabi dun sa Targum, and the word of Yahuwah was with him. And the word of Yahuwah helped him. Yun, yun, yun po yung laging ginagamit sa Targum. So I encourage you to, uh, uh, kung nagbabasa po kayo ng Torah, or you have another cycle in your scripture reading, the Targum is a good source, especially the Targum of Onkelos. Kasi yung Targum of Onkelos, I believe, is more faithful than the Targum of uh, the Palestine. Because Targum of Palestine, marami na rin rabimik uh, uh, insertions. Pero kung babasahin niyo po, marami, may mga matututunan po din kayo dun sa Targum of Palestine. Alright, or Targum of Jonathan. So balik tayo ngayon dito sa chapter 35, when he gathered. What was the purpose? Uh, sorry, chapter 36. First purpose, when he gathered the people, it was because uh, it was for them to offer. All right, sabi dyan in um, chapter uh, sorry, 35 na, 35 verse 21. Yan na yung sinabi ng, ni, ni Moshe in the first part. Ito yung kailangan natin for, for the candlestick, for the incense altar, for all the instruments of the, the tabernacle. In verse 20, nung bumalik sila, 21, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and they brought Yahuwah's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all his service and for the Kodesh garments. All right? So why were they gathered? They were asked to build a tabernacle. Okay? So, kung titignan natin, pag pumunta na ngayon tayo sa Brit Hadasha, makikita ngayon natin kung bakit tayo ina-assemble ng Panginoon. Alright? This word church and assembles is a big word. Alright? It's an important word na kailangan natin alisin sa isip natin yung church, church, church. Because church is not in scripture. Alright? Yun yung sad truth. Church is not in scripture. Brother Emi, nakasulat sa King James ko, mali yung pagkaka-translate. Alright? Because the word church is coming from the word house of idols. The real word is ecclesia. The real English word is to assemble and to congregate. So now the question is, why were they assembled? And now, why were we, 
why are we assembling? Tulad nga, yung sinabi ni Brother Ivan sa kanyang panalangin, bagamat magkakalayo tayo, tayo ay nag-a-assemble. Tayo ay, ano sabi? Tinipon. Alright? Tinipon tayo ng Panginoon para ano? We will go back to Old Testament Scripture para maintindihan natin bakit tayo nagtitipon. Nagtitipon ba tayo para kumain ng lechon? Hindi. Di ba? And that's a sad truth because some, sometimes kapag may patlak, puro lechon ang handa. Pag may birthday, puro lechon ang handa. Minsan nga, nag-church lang tayo kasi birthday ni ganito. Kailangan kong pumunta para makakain ako ng masarap na lechong kawali. Di ba? Mali yung purpose. Now, the purpose of our assembly is should be the same as the purpose in the Old Testament or in the Tanakh. Bakit? Kasi pare-pare, ano lang naman eh. Sabi nga nung post sa Ecclesiastes, sabi ko, sabi ni, hindi ko pala sinabi, sabi ni King Solomon, there's nothing new under the sun. So kung anong paulit-ulit na ginagawa ng mga pagano, dapat ganun din yung paulit-ulit na ginagawa ng mga believers. Alright? So, if it's a routine for the believers in the beginning, it should be also a routine for us up to this time. So, why were they gathered? First of all, Moshe said, nagawa tayo ng tabernacle. Pero hindi tayo makakagawa ng tabernacle kung walang offering. Alright? So the offering first. We need to offer. And what did the people do? Lesson natin, they willingly offered. And for those people na, uh, as we discussed last week, meron na po tayong box doon ng uh, willing heart offering na kung saan doon nyo na lang po ilagay at uh, doon na lang po namin kukunin so hindi nyo na kailangan iabot sa amin. But for those people who cannot reach us, if you want to offer or if you want to help the ministries, okay? And as I said last week, nung pinag-aralan po natin yung tithes and offering, hindi ko po, wala na po akong pipilitin sa inyo. But of course, we will preach the word of Yahuwah. Pero kinlarify ko kung saan nyo ilalagay, saan natin ilalagay ang tithes and offering natin. And I, we showed you kung ano yung different offerings na pwede natin paglagyan. Alright? So one is of the ministries. Second is to help our, our friends, our, our strangers who are in need, friends who are in need and also for the Mowedim. And which I believe, marami sa inyo, I was saved for the Mowedim. <laughs> Alalahanin po natin that the things that we give are not for our own benefit. Alright? If it's for the Mowedim, it's to glorify Yahuwah. So, hindi pa din para sa atin. Okay? So, let's go back in verse 21. Sabi dyan, they offered willingly. Okay? They offered willingly and they offered an offering of gold unto Yahweh in verse 22. And then why did they need to offer? It's for the building of the tabernacle. Okay? Now verse chapter 36 talks about Bezalil. At pinag-aralan po natin. Anong ibig sabihin ng Bezalil? Bezalel. It means the shadow of Elohim. Now, pagdugtong-dugtongin natin ito mamaya as we go to the Brit Hadashah because being a shadow wala po yung sariling movement. The shadow should be doing what the source of the shadow is doing. Otherwise, pang Halloween yan. <laughs> Alright? Pag hindi na sumusunod yung shadow mo, ay tumakbo ka na <laughs> at iba na po yan. Okay? <laughs> at saka sa mga kapatiran ko na nagtitrick or treat dyan, <laughs> ay mag-ingat-ingat po tayo. <laughs> Dahil hindi po yan para sa Panginoon. Okay? Kayo ay na-trick na, na. Okay. So, why were they gathered? They were gathered to offer. They were gathered to build the tabernacle. And they were gathered to do it according to all how it was commanded. Alright? So, specific instructions. First instruction, you offer for the tabernacle. Second instruction, Binigay kay Bet Salil. Now, I, here's what I believe in. Alright? You can believe otherwise. Pero I believe in this Bet Salil. Bet Salel. Okay? Bet Salel. Ay meron na siyang kaalaman in, ter, in, in, uh, in craftsmanship nung sila ay galing pa ng Egypt. Alright? So I believe itong batang ito ay pinagkalooban na ng Panginoon ng 
kaunawaan, parang yung pamangking kong galing po mag-drawing. Kung nakita niyo yung mga drawing ni Zeke, ay marunong na. Kung baga na-train na or na, na, natutunan na niya ang craftsmanship na ito. Now, here we can see that they were given the wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. And napakagandang unawain nito because when it comes to the, uh, in Ezekiel, nasabi ng Panginoon, I will put the Torah in their hearts, in their inward parts, ay mas madali nating i-implement, mas madali nating uh, i- sa pamuhay yung Torah kapag na isa puso natin. But, here's what I wanted to point out. Si Betzalil, knowing these things in Egypt, madali niya ngayong ma-implement ang inutos sa kanya ng Panginoon. So basically, what I'm saying is, Betzalil was prepared by Yahuwah when, he was, when they were going out of Egypt so that when the time that they needed someone to create the tabernacle, to, to build the tabernacle, Betzalil was available. And ganun din po tayo. Dapat tayo ay maging available. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na maalam tayo ng hindi tayo nagbabasa. Kaya nga po, I encourage you to read. Marami akong mga articles. It's really, it's your choice. Kung bubuksan niyo yung document na yun or hindi, it's your choice. A lot of people would just say, like. Marami po tayong mga kaibigan na ganyan, na likers lang. Ngayon kung na-offend kayo, ibig sabihin, likers lang kayo. Di ba? Meron yung mga, pag sinabi kong hallelujah, ang sabihin nyo, amen pa din ang sinasabi. Di ba? So, uh, it actually gives me uh, an idea kung binasa nyo ba talaga yung post o hindi. But what I'm encouraging us to do is to read and read and read. Because reading and listening, ganyan po ang ginagawa natin sa eskwelahan. Hindi tayo matututo kung kating klases lang tayo lagi. Alright? And I strongly believe that Bet Salil knew the handiwork, the craftsmanship, because he was prepared to do it. So hindi tayo magiging preparado to answer every man, to answer, to give them the reason of our hope that is in us, kung hindi tayo handa kung hindi tayo nagbabasa, kung lagi na lang nating ituturo si Brother MB or si Brother Gary, itanong nyo sa kanila. Because there will come a time na magkakanya-kanya tayo. And there will come a time na tayo mismo ang dapat naghahayag ng hope na meron tayo. We should be ready to answer. Alright? So, babalik tayo dun sa building of the tabernacle. Paulit-ulit to eh. Bakit? Kasi matigas ang ulo ng tao. So, ngayon, they were going to execute it. Why were they gathered? To offer, to build the tabernacle, to do it according to all how Yahuwah commanded it. Alright? So, kung babasahin nyo po yan, chapter 36, ay sobra-sobra na nga yung inoffering nila dyan. In verse 5, sabi dyan, And they spake unto Moshe, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which Yahuwah commanded to make. Napakasasarap ng feeling na sobra-sobra yung resources mo. Kaya nga po, kung tatandaan nyo yung sinabi ni Apostle, ah, hindi. Sino ba nagsabi sa Brit Hadash I think it's Apostle Paul. Yung sinabi niya, who goeth to warfare? Ah, I think it was Yahusha. Ang sinabi niya ay, uh, wait, let me just gather my thoughts. Um, yung sinabi niya na pag pumunta ka do dali lang ha <laughs> hindi ka pupunta sa gera nang wala kang battle plan I think it was Yahusha who said that I think it's a possible call na it, it, it's, it's about tight sir no no, no it's not 1 Corinthians 9 it was I think it was part of a parable na sabi ng Panginoon uh, magpapagawa ka ng bahay na hindi nakulang yes. yung materialis mo. Right? Wala kang plan. Yes. Uh, uh, if you can help me search where that is, I think it was a parable by Yahusha. Uh, nasabi niya, walang tao na hanapin nyo na lang. Alam niyo yung sinasabi ko, right? Alright, just uh, yeah. give, give me the resources. Babalik ako dito sa text natin. In chapter 
na sinabi ng ni Moshe, sobra-sobra na yung materiales ng tabernacle. And uh, it's, it, it's a good feeling, it's a good uh, a sign na kung saan madali tayo, madali nating i-build yung tabernacle kung kompleto ang materiales. How many buildings here in Dubai and even in the Philippines ay makikita nyo na sinimulan pero hindi natapos. Alright? Kung kayo po ay taga Maynila, merong malaking hukay sa tabi ng Robinson's Galeria. So, alam nyo yun, may, may, may malaki pong hukay doon at nabasa ko yung history noon, sinimulan pero hindi natapos. Here in Dubai, there are so... Sige po. Luke, Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Let's turn our scriptures to Luke chapter 14. Verse 28. Verse 28. Thank you, Brother Ivan. Okay, so, kapag tayo ay magsisimulang mag-build, kailangan kumpleto ang ating materyales. Now listen very carefully because a lot of people think na we're building our tabernacle. But the question is, have we offered the materials that we need? Have we given what uh, is supposed to be used for our tabernacles. Okay. Luke 14, verse 28. Sabi niya dyan. Actually, let me start with verse 25. And, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life also, He cannot be my disciple. Now, take note of verse 26 because it relates doon sa sinasabi in Exodus chapter 36 kung saan, uh, sorry, chapter 35, it's talking about giving with a willing heart. It's not, it's not saying na i-hate mo ang mga magulang mo, i-hate mo because that contradicts with scripture. That contradicts with the Ten Commandments about honoring your parents or about loving your neighbor. But what it means is if you cannot give, all right, to Yahuwah, kung paano ka nagbibigay sa mga mahal mo sa buhay, Yahusha is saying, you cannot be my disciple. Kung mas mahal mo ang asawa mo, mas mahal mo ang magulang mo, mas mahal mo ang mga tao, ibang tao, mas mahal mo ang bagnet, Now that's true. Kasi hindi natin mabitawan yung bagnet. Bakit? Kumikita tayo ng pera dyan? Nabibenta natin? Because we love the money that we earn from it. Totoo ba yun? Totoo yun. Hindi natin mabitawan kasi there are worldly things that we will justify kasi sasabihin natin, ano naman, andyan naman ang biyaya ng Panginoon. It's always the grace. So we continue in transgressing the Torah that grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid. Alright? Now let's go back to our text. Verse 26. So is Yahusha really saying na we should hate? If this had Hebrew roots of the text, siguro mas mauunawaan natin. Pero going back to the Torah, ngayon mas naiintindihan natin. It's not about hatred. The English word is using hate But going back to Exodus 36, what it truly means is if you can willingly give to Yahuwah more than how you give to your wife, more than how to give to your parents, or more than how to give to yourself, may bago kang iPhone 12, Bible, hindi ka makabili? Big question mark. Di ba? Yung Bible natin, luray-luray na. Now, let me just continue. Wala akong sinasabing masamang luray-luray ang Bible ninyo kasi mas maganda ang tingnan kung naluluray yung Bible nyo. Pero kung yung hindi nyo na mabasa yung mga pahina, ay malaking problema yan. Now let me continue. Sabi niya in verse 27, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, you can see here, sana nakikita natin ang pagdugtong doon sa chapter 36 ng Exodus about giving willingly na out of alam niyo, out of everything we have we're willing to give our lives. Na makikita natin in chapter 36 of Shemot ay sobra-sobra na yung kanilang binigay. All right? 
And Yahusha is simply saying, you cannot be my disciple if you cannot give like these people. All right? Verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower? Now think of it, about this. If we're building a tabernacle, tanungin natin ang mga sarili natin. Ano ang mga materyales na gagamitin natin? Sabi niya dyan, sit it not down first. Magbabasa muna siya ng Torah. <laughs> and count it the cost whether he have to finish. Okay, tinanggal ko na yung mga yung mga italicized. May, may, may sense naman, di ba? <laughs> whether he have to finish. Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish all that behold it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Anong ibig sabihin nito? You have to be ready in building your tabernacle. You have to plan ahead. That's why I'm telling you, telling each and every one of us, we have to read. We have to put the foundations of our tabernacle. We have to know what we believe in. Verse 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now take note, pag binasa niyo po ulit, yung 35 and 36 of Shemot, what were they giving? They were giving their gold. They were giving precious stones. They were giving all the precious things that they had. Paano tayo magbibigay sa Panginoon? Brethren, I'm not asking for your gold. Hindi ko po yun hinihingi. Hindi yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Hindi yun ang tinuturo natin dito. Alright? But what I'm trying to point out to us is we have to build our own tabernacles with the resources that we have, with the scriptures because we have to build. We have to be ready in building that tabernacle. Let me just continue. In verse 33, sabi niya dyan, He cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the downhill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Brethren, it's time for us to start establishing our faith. Marahil naniwala kayo kay Brother MB sa kanya mga tinuturo in the past seven months, but I encourage each and every one to dig in deep personally. To have that real personal relationship with Yahuwah and Yahusha Hamashiach. Alright? Meron tayong mga individual accountability. At makikita natin dito, dito sa Exodus chapter 35-36, they had their individual accountabilities. Kaya nga po, ang bawat isa ay nagdala ng offering. Alright? Wala pa tayo sa pagbibil. Nagdala pa lang sila ng offering at nakita ni Moshe, sobra-sobra na, magsimula na tayo ng ibibuild natin. Okay. Babalik, sasabihin ko ulit, why were they assembled? They were assembled to offer and to build. To build what? What was commanded to Moshe. Alright? Hindi mag-build lang tayo ayon sa sarili nating kaalaman. Hindi. I-build yan ayon sa sinabi ng Panginoon. At kung babasahin niyo po, paulit-ulit yan na sinasabi. Uh, according to what was commanded to Moshe. Alright. Chapter 35, makikita natin dyan yung FFF. Chapter 36, makikita natin the curtains, the coverings. Brother Gary, can I have a picture of the tabernacle? I hope you're all following ng at sa ating pag-aaral. Okay. So, in chapter 36, makikita natin the four curtains there. The curtain coverings na pinag-aralan natin in the past. We have... Uh, let me just... Uh, okay na ba? Multiple. Okay, ready to share. All right. So in chapter 36, we have the four coverings of the tabernacle. 
which is the goat's hair, yung pinaka uh, sabi dyan in verse 14, uh, yung yan yan. Okay, so pinag-aralan natin to last week. Meron yung covering na merong mga cherubim. Okay, and then we have three other layers, which is the goat's hair. We have the ram skin to cover the tabernacle, and we have also the badger's skin. Yung ram skin is dyed with red. All right, so ito yung may cherubim, ito yung goat's hair, ito yung ram skin dyed with red, and then we have the badger's skin. Okay, so yan po yung takip ng tabernacle that we will read in chapter 36. And then we also have the veil. And if you notice, I don't know if I said this to you earlier, if you notice, the, the place where the Holy of Holies is, is covered with the curtains of the cherubim. Okay, kasi ito yung curtain ng cherubim. So, uh, taas, lahat ng gilid niya, up to the veil. They have the curtains of the cherubim. Just like in the Garden of Eden, na kung saan ay hindi makapasok si Adan at Eva, bakit nilagyan ng Panginoon ng cherubim yung gate ng garden. So here in the Holy of Holies, ay hindi rin basta-basta makapasok ang tao because of the holiness of Yahuwah. Now, let's go to chapter 37. Don't worry, hindi ko babasahin lahat uli. Pero kung titignan po natin, here's one one detail that I want us to see. Okay? Everything was covered with gold inside the tabernacle. Everything was covered with gold inside the tabernacle. Verse 2, And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold. Verse 3, And he cast for it four rings of gold. Verse 4, last part, And overlaid them with gold. Verse 6, and he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing something, but verse 11, and he overlaid it with pure gold. Hindi po ito yung grocery, kundi ito yung totoong gold po ito, ha? And verse 11, and made there unto a crown of gold. Verse 12, in the middle part, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. In verse 15, and he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. Verse 16, last part, and his covers to cover without of pure gold. Verse 17, and he made the candlestick of pure gold. All right, verse 22, their knobs and their branches were all the same. All of it was one beaten work of pure gold. Verse 23, last part, his snuff dishes of pure gold. Verse 24, of a talent of pure gold made he it. Verse 25, and he made the incense altar of shittim wood. Uh, sorry, verse 30, 26, and he overlaid it with pure gold. Last part, also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. Verse 28, and he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. You can see that everything was covered with gold. At dyan po sa picture nyo, makikita nyo, lahat po yan covered sa gold. Now let's go to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. All right. One of my favorite verses here in Job. Verse 8. Sabi ni Job, alam natin ang pinagdadaanan ni Job, masaklap, uh, puro pagsubok, nangangati. <laughs> Mahirap po yung nangangati. Kahit katabi ka lang nung nangangati, mahirap yun. <laughs> Verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive it. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Sabi niya, kapag tinry ako ng Panginoon. Now, what's the purpose of putting the gold in the fire? To remove all impurities. All right? The purpose of uh, refining gold in the fire para maalis alin yung mga, yung pwedeng masunog. All right? And you notice everything that was inside the tabernacle is of pure gold. Uh, Brother Gary, pa share nga po ako ng screen. Um,
All right. No, I will not. Close that. All right. Sirach chapter two. One of the one of the passages in Sirach na hindi ko makalimutan. My son, if you come forward to serve Yahweh, prepare yourself for temptation. Now, this is similar to the Israelites because they were going to serve Yahuwah. The purpose of them congregating, the purpose of them being called as a kahal was to assemble to serve Yahuwah, to offer to Yahuwah. Sabi niya dyan, set your heart right and be steadfast. Remember, anong paalala ni Moshe, ng Panginoon kay Moshe sa mga tao? Make sure they have a willing heart to offer to me. And do not be hasty in time of calamity. Cleave to him and do not depart that you may be honored at the end of your life. Accept whatever is brought upon you and in changes uh, and in changes that humble you, be patient. Hindi yung konting na natry ka lang, babalik na ako sa mundo. For gold is tested in the fire. Now, do these verses connect? Yes, it does. It does. Because everything inside the tabernacle was made of pure gold. And later on, titignan natin, ano ba yung tabernacle? Bakit ba tayo nagko-congregate? Bakit ba kailangan natin magpalakasan? Let me just continue. Verse 5. An acceptable man in the furnace of humiliation. Now, I, you will now hear, as upon reading this, maalala nyo ngayon yung sinabi ni Yahusha na before, before they hated you, they hated me first. And Yahusha was actually humiliated at Calvary, alright, at Golgotha. Bakit? Wala naman siyang kasalanan, pero siya yung napapahiya. Di ba? Kaya nga sabi dito in verse 6, trust in Him and He will help you make your way straight and hope in Him. You who fear Yahuwah, wait for His mercy and turn not aside lest you fall. You who fear Yahuwah, trust in Him and your will not fail. You who fear Yahuwah, hope for good things, for everlasting joy and mercy. Consider the ancient generations and see whoever trusted in Yahuwah and was put to shame. Or whoever persevered in the fear of Yahuwah and was forsaken. Or whoever called upon Him and was overlooked. For Yahuwah is compassionate and merciful. He forgives sins and saves in time of afflictions. Let me just read. Continue, uh, continue reading. Woe to timid hearts and to slack hands and to the sinner who walks along two ways. If you remember Haran, he was double-hearted. Sabi niya, kung si Nimrod ang tama, at least pogi pa din ako kay Nimrod. Kapag si Abraham naman ang tama, at least, napagtanggol ko yung kapatid ko. Di ba? Pero anong ginawa ng Panginoon? He was burned down. Bakit? His heart was not right. He was a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. Alright? Makikita nga ngayon natin, ang dali ngayon pagdugtong-dugtongin na mga nasa Brit Hadasha or New Testament when we get to understand the Old Testament as a whole. Alright? So sabi niya dyan, Woe to the faint heart for it has no trust. Therefore, it will not be sheltered. Woe to you who have lost your endurance. Kaya nga sabi ni Apostle Paul, as a good soldier of Yahusha Hamashiach. Di ba? Lagi niyang nire-relate niya ngayon sa race, nire-relate niya sa soldier. Why? It takes endurance to survive. What will you do when Yahuwah punishes you? Those who fear Yahuwah will not disobey his words, and those who love him will keep his ways. Those who fear Yahuwah will seek his approval, and those who love him will be filled with the Torah. Brethren, mahal ba talaga natin ang Panginoon? Balik tayo sa usapang bagnes. Mahal ba talaga natin ang Panginoon? If we live, if we are filled with the Torah, we will not use verses in the Brit Hadashah to justify what we want to do. Let's continue. Those who fear Yahuwah will prepare their hearts and will humble themselves before Him. Let us fall into the hands of Yahuwah, but not into the hands of men. For as His majesty is, 
so also is his mercy. This is a beautiful Sirach, uh, Ecclesiasticus. Alam nyo, I just really don't understand why Ecclesiasticus was taken out from the King James. Di ba? Sino nagtanggal? Yung akala natin na nagtatanggol sa atin, the Protestant movement, those people na nagla- pinaglaban ang salita ng Panginoon, those people who went against the Roman Catholic ways, sila ang nagtanggal po ng mga librong ito that should establish us, that should make us more understand how to fear Yahuwah. Napakaganda nitong chapter na to. It's talking about endurance. It's talking about how to be strong in the faith. Tapos ngayon, yung faith natin na sinasabi dun sa, sa 1 Timothy chapter 4, they shall depart from the faith. Yung faith ng ano? Faith of the Romans road. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, balikan natin yung pinag-aaralan natin. Chapter 36, uh, 37. Why is it all of gold? Bakit gold lahat ang pinag-uusapan natin? Now, you go sa binasa ni Brother Danny in chapter 38, nandiyan naman yung bronze. Okay? Bronze at silver naman yan. But if you notice, uh, Brother Gary, ilabas po nga natin uli yung picture natin, yung wide angle naman. Yung Oh, my white angle. All right. So, makikita natin that everything in the tabernacle, yan sa loob, is made of gold. But this one, okay, this is a bigger picture. This is the brazen altar. Okay? Ito po. Yan ang brazen altar. And then you've got a mikvah here in the middle. And then you've got the tabernacle. Now, when it talks about Okay, when it talks about the door of the tabernacle of congregation, ito po yun. All right, gate yun, gate. That's why when Yahushua said, I am the door, all right, and, and when he even said, great is the gate that leadeth to destruction, uh, wide is the gate that leads to destruction, and narrow is the way. Uh, that leads to life live, everlasting. Sorry, I'm just paraphrasing. We're talking about this gate, this door. Okay? At nung sinabi ni Yahushua that I am the door, yan po yung kanyang pinipicture. Okay? Because this is the only place hanggang dito lang po yung tao. From here to here, from the altar to the tabernacle, it's all priesthood. Alright? It's all priestly responsibilities. So ang tao, ang access lang nito ay dito hanggang sa brazen altar. And here, as we study chapter 38, dito naman we've got bronze, we've got silver, okay? May mga bagay na ginawa sa bronze and silver. So makikita natin may level ng mga tinutunaw, okay? Gold obviously is the most precious of all, but silver is still precious. And bronze is still precious, okay? But it's the least of the precious uh, materials that was used. At ang ginagamit po for the altar was bronze, okay? So, huwag niyo pong makalimutan kasi when we talk about the door or the porch, ito po yan, okay? That's the porch and that's, uh, uh, I believe that you can see that in verse 8, nasabi dyan, And he made the laver of brass in the foot of it, a brass of the looking glass of the women assembling, which assembled all at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. So, uh, balik tayo dun sa mga precious materials na ginagamit. Kung makikita nyo nga po dito nakasulat, the bronze altar that was for burnt offering. And dito, the only gate into the courtyard at uh, you can see there. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Thank you, Brother Gary, for the time. Kasi <laughs> lahat ito yung i-discuss ko. So mukhang hindi talaga natin masasakop lahat kung mag haftara tayo. But uh, it's a combined haftara of uh, Wayakhel and Pe- Pekuday. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So last time, pinag-aralan natin 2 Corinthians chapter 3 when we were talking about the veil. And mas madaling ngayon tandaan, parehong 3-3. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 
I'll start with verse 1. Kasi verse 1 talks about yung mga pag-aaway nila bilang mga magkakapatid. Alright? Being part of the assembly. Hindi ko na po gagamitin yung church. And remind me, if I use the word church, it's because it's the living that has been implanted in my head. Okay? Sabi dyan, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Katulad lang ng pag-aaral natin about the tabernacle, mahirap intindihin to if we're not spiritual. And uh, praise Yahuwah, kasi ako personally, ang dami kong natutunan sa pag-aaral natin itong Exodus. Sabi niya dyan, uh, But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, in Mashiach. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envyings, strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? And think about this. Ganito tayo dati. Baptist ako eh. Di ba? Ganito tayo dati. Kay atras ako eh. Di ba? Ikaw kanino ka? Oh. Kay patagilid naman ako. <laughs> uh, Alright. So, sabi niya, verse 4. Tingnan natin to. For while one saith, I am a brother Gary, and another, I am a brother Embi, are ye not karma? Di ba? Parang relate lang. Andaling makarelate. Ako galing ako BBC. Ikaw, saan ka galing? AAC. Ikaw, galing ka ng CCK. Di ba? Lahat na lang ng abbreviation ginamit ng tao para magkaroon ng sarili. Kaya nga pag may nagtatanong, saan ka ngayon? Okta. <laughs> para luminaw ang mata natin. <laughs> diba? <laughs> now, it's, it's a mindset. It's a mindset that has been uh, implanted in our brains, in our minds about denominations na anong denomination ka? Which is actually causing divisions. And it's part of the Satan's plan, when Yahushua said in John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Okay? And he was also a liar. Sorry, pinara phrase ko na. <laughs> he was a liar. Alright? And what, anong description sa Revelation? He is the deceiver of the brethren. So, anong nilagay sa isip natin? Denominationalism? <laughs> nilagay sa isip natin yung denomination. Ano ka? One is ako. Ikaw, Baptist ka. Ikaw, Methodist. Ikaw, INC. Ikaw, Kibuloy. Di ba? Ay, kay Kibuloy ka, hindi ako bibili ng pagkain mo. Alright? Nagkaroon tayo ng division. Nagkaroon tayo ng mga... Uh, pag hahati hati na grupo-grupo tayo na hindi natin nakikita isang salita lang ng Panginoon ang pinag-uusapan. I'm not talking about ecumenicalism. <laughs> Ecumenism. Ano yun? Tama ba? I, I'm not talking about being ecumenical. But what I, we're trying to point out is it's not about the denomination. It's about uniting. Kaya nga sabi ni Apostle Paul that hopefully someday we become united in the faith. Na magkauna unawa tayo na ang basihan natin ay hindi doktrina ng simbahan, kundi doktrina ng salita ng Panginoon. Because that's what happens. And if you notice, if you're old enough to understand if you're a Baptist, alam nyo itong mga pastor na ito ay magkakaibigan dati. But what happened? Dahil hindi kayo masyado nagsusol winning, may sarili kaming grupo. Ayan church na yan, puro open niya. Ayan church na yan, puro soul winning niya. But what we fail to see is what Apostle Paul was preaching na pinipreach sa pulpit, palitan lang natin ang pangalan. O oh, sige, pangalan na namin ni Brother Gary. Am I your Brother Gary? Am I your Brother Danny? Am I your Brother MB? What Apostle Paul says, verse 5, Who then is Brother MB? And who is Brother Gary? And who is Brother... Danny, but ministers by whom you believed, even as Yahuwah gave to every man. Then he talks about planting. Daming natuto ngayon mag-plant. Kahit nasa loob ng apartment, nag-planting. Okay? Nakakatuwa yung ampalaya namin. 
Nilagyan ni mama ng mga bakal na ano. Hindi ko makapit. Bakit? Mainit. Kahawak na gano'n yung ampalaya. Bibitaw pag tanghali. <laughs> Kita nyo? Kulang na lang matay. Eh. Mukha ng tao yung ampalaya. Now, he talks about planting. Let me just read on. Verse 6. I have planted Apollos water, but Yahuwah gave the increase. Uh, I would uh, prefer reading this in the Sefer para hindi tayo malabuan dun sa Lord, sa mga God. Let, uh, just give me one minute to search that out. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All right. Verse 7. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but Yah that gives the increase. Tama naman? Hindi naman si Brother MB ang nagpapalago sa inyo. Hindi si Brother Gary. It's Yahuwah, and if you develop that relationship with Yahuwah and with Yahusha Hamashiach as his mediator, as we understand who Yahusha is, mas maihintindihan natin that he's Yahuwah's word. Okay? Verse 8, Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 9, For we are laborers together with Yah, you are Yahuwah's husbandry, you are Yahuwah's building. Makikita mo ngayon dito si Apostle Paul, si Segway siya. First, he talks about laborer tayo eh. Same with Exodus chapter 36, where Bezalel was a laborer, a shadow of Yahuwah in building the tabernacle. And makikita natin dito how Apostle Paul relates now to the tabernacle. Sabi niya, una, laborer tayo. Bakit? Pag nagtatanim ka, it gives you exert much effort in tilling the ground and laboring. And then, he would segue, alright? Papasok ngayon siya dyan, sabi niya, ye are Yahuwah's husbandry. Bakit? Yahushua said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. And you can relate that with, with uh, what Yahushua said. Pero, pagpasok ng verse 9, in the last part, sabi niya, you are Yahuwah's building. You are Yahuwah's sanctuary. Ito yung sinabi ng Panginoon na let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell with them. Alright? Ito po ang ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul. So he's not quoting his own words. He's actually getting the concept from Exodus chapter 35 to 38. Actually to, to, to chapter 40. Verse 10. According to the grace of Yah, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. So basically, lahat tayo ay dapat ngayong bumuo ng ating sariling tabernacle. Listen, sabi po dyan, I have laid the foundation, I and another one, another builds their own. But let every man take heed how he builds their apart. So ngayon, as we imagine people working, people offering, people helping Betzal El, building that tabernacle for Yahuwah. Now remember, what was the purpose of the tabernacle? Yahuwah said that I may dwell with them. So what's the purpose of us building this tabernacle in us? That He may dwell in us. Remember, Nadab and Abihu, Yahuwah will not just yung basta-basta lang na magdi-duel. Sa, in, hindi lang basta-basta pupunta ang Panginoon. And if you can imagine, the Day of Atonement, it was only once a year. Ganun kabanal ang Panginoon. And sabi niya, kay Aharon, ganito niyo gagawin. There was a proper sequence. Pinakaralan po natin niya. Now, looking at this epistle gives us a much uh, more illustrated picture of Exodus chapter 38, sabi niyan, let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. So ngayon, mga kapatid, are we, first of all, are we racking up gold so that we can build that tabernacle? Hindi yung pwedeng basta-basta na lang. At napakaganda, okay, just stay in Corinthians, let me just go back to Exodus. Kasi may isang verse dito in chapter 36, I believe. Yes, chapter 30, sorry, 35. 
na kung saan sinabi in verse 22, And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto Yahuwah. They offered, but every one of them gave gold. Lahat sila may parte ng ginto na nasa loob ng tabernacle. Lahat sila, bawat isa sa kanila, hindi lang kortina ang binigay. Lahat may parte doon sa ginto. Paano sila nagkaroon ng ginto? Remember, when they came out of Egypt, they spoiled the Egyptians. Pero, ano ka? Isipin natin itong maigi. When we spoil, or alimbawa, may nakuha tayo. Alimbawa, nag-Christmas party kayo doon sa kumpanya niyo. <laughs> Nanalo kayo ng rep! <laughs> Nanalo tayo ng uh, kung ano-ano. Kung ano man na panalunan natin. The question is, are we willing to give it to Yahuwah? Or are we willing to give a portion of it to Yahuwah? Dito mo ngayon marirelate kung bakit namatay si uh, Ananias at si Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. Because chapter 4 talks about giving and everybody who gave willingly. Parehong-pareho lang ng book of Exodus. It was a repeat of the book of Exodus. Maybe not building the physical tabernacle, but building the spiritual tabernacle. And uh, it, it just gives us a clearer picture. Ano ba ang kailangan ko ibigay sa Panginoon? Okay? So let's go back sa atin binabasa in Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 10, last part. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. Let's take heed. Alright? Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is his laid which is Yahusha HaMashiach. Now, listen very carefully. The most important foundation is you truly know who Yahusha is in the hierarchy. Okay? Napaka-importante. And this is one of the main doctrines that we have to truly understand. Maybe a lot of you are still confused kasi sinasabi ni Brother MB, hindi Panginoon, hindi Diyos si Jesus Christ. Okay? Sabihin ko yun kasi Greek si Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. I don't believe anymore in the Trinity. I can boldly say that. Kung aalis kayo, isipin niyo munang maigi. Because Yahuwah said in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Hear, O Yasharel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, is one Elohim. And even Yahusha himself said, quoted that, Our Lord, our God, is one Lord. Alright? So we cannot say tatlo sila. Three in one. Hindi yan kape. Alright? <laughs> They're all in one. And, uh, and if you notice what I posted earlier, in <laughs> uh, Now, go to Philippians chapter 2. I would just like to sidetrack on this. Philippians chapter 2. Okay? Kasi maraming gumagamit nito. And I will also read it in the Sefer para mas malinawan po tayo. Because I study this, and maraming nag, nag-question sa Sefer about this. But the Sefer has a more accurate translation on this. Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 9. Wherefore, okay, babasahin ko yan sa Sefer. Basahin nyo sa King James para makita po ninyo yung pagkakaiba. Wherefore, Yahuwah also has highly exalted him, who? Yahusha and given him a name which is above every name that the, at the name of Yahusha. All right? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Let me stop there. Okay? Malinaw po yung sinabi that the, at the name of Yahusha. Now, a lot of people will say at the name of Jesus na kung saan uh, yan yung pinaglalaban nila kasi yan nga yung given name given under heaven whereby we must be saved pero kung titignan niyo po in Isaiah 42 verse 8 Yahuwah said I am Yahuwah that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images he's very precious with his name in Isaiah 45 verse 23 sabi niya I have sworn by myself The word is gone out of my mouth, right in righteousness, and shall not return that 
and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. So basically, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, is actually, uh, verse 10, is actually quoting Isaiah 45. Now, para hindi tayo malito, basahin natin yung verse 11. And I'll read it in the Sefer. Okay? And that every tongue should confess that Yahuwah is Yahusha Hamashiach to the glory of Yah the Father. Ang nakasulat po sa King James is that, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Adonai. Okay? Pero the, the Greek gives the right sequence or the Sefer gives us the right sequence in Greek, from the Greek, which is Yahuwah is Yahusha Hamashiach. Bakit? Yahusha Hamashiach is the word of Yahuwah. Therefore, verse 10, pag in-expound nyo po yan, that at the name of Yahuwah, who is salvation, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So it basically gives back the glory to Yahuwah because Yahusha himself bears the name of Yahuwah, which means Yahuwah is Yehusha, Yeshua. Sorry, Yahuwah is Yeshua. Yun nga yung pangalan mga kapatid ni Joshua. Yah, his name was Hosea, the son of Nun. All right, Yah. Kaya sabi Hosea talaga ang pangalan niya. Kaya nagkaroon ng Jo, <laughs> hindi po yun Jojo. <laughs> Yah po yun. Yahu. Alright? And it's the same name as Yahusha. Yod, hey, wow. Tama ba? Yod, yod, hey, wow, shin, ayin. Alright? That's the same letters of the name Joshua. Okay? So, sabi dyan, verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Yahuwah is Yahusha HaMashiach to the glory of Yah, the Father. So, balik tayo sa, sa Corinthians. Okay? Balik tayo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I hope you're following, brethren. Okay? Tagalog, sir. Tagalog. Ay, Tagalog. <laughs> Sige, bro. Bro, bigyan mo ako ng Tagalog rendition. May hindi ba kayo naiintindihan to? <laughs> ang sabi po sa verse 11, para mas clear ang sabi dyan, at that every tongue shall confess that Yahusha Hamashiach, or Jesus Christ, Yahushua, the Messiah, is Yahuwah. Yun. Yun po yung sinasabi niya. Yahushua Hamashiach is Yahuwah, the glory of Abba. Amen. Amen. Babalik ta rin ko. Yahushua. Una yung Yahuwah. Alright? Yahuwah is Yahu. Okay. Babaybayin ko ha. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess, kasi dito po sa King James yun, nagbaliktad yung Jesus Christ is Lord. Pero in the Greek rendition, okay, in the Greek original, na mas may original pang Hebrew, I believe. In the Greek, it says, Lord is Yahusha Hamashiach. So ngayon, babasahin ko uli, okay, na ang bawat bibig ay magko-confess magpapahayag sasambitin sa kanyang bibig na si Yahua ay si Yahusha na tagapagligtas sa glory ni Yahua Aba. Okay? So, si Yahusha ay nagkatawang ay si Yahua ay si Yahusha. Sorry. Ulitin ko ha. Sa Yahusha ang salita ni Yahua. At siya yung nagkatawang tao, yung salita ni Yahuwah. Alright? Pero ang glory, kanino? Kay Yahuwah pa din. Kanino luluhod ang mga tao? Kay Yahuwah pa din. Dahil pag lumahod sila kay Yahusha, lumuluhod sila kay Yahuwah pa din. Dahil pagdating ng millennial reign, si Yahusha ang magrurule. Saan? Sa earth. Okay, malinaw po yan sa book of Revelation. Hindi sa langit. Sa earth. Okay? Ang nakasulat doon, si Yahusha ang magro-rule. So therefore, kanino tayo luluhod? 
kay Yahusha. Kanino nabibigay yung glory? Kay Yahua. Kasi sabi niya sa Isaiah 45, Dev every knee shall bow. To whom? To Yahua. Kaya nga po, babalik ngayon tayo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Bakit tayo napunta doon? Kasi sabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 3, okay, let me just go back dito sa ating, uh, sabi niya dyan, in verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahuwah is salvation, the Messiah. Okay? Pag, pag binasa niyo yung Yahusha, Yahuwah is the Messiah. Yahuwah is salvation. Alright? Bakit ko in-emphasize to? Dahil napaka-importante pong maunawaan natin kung sino si Yahusha Hamashiach. Kung sino si Jesus Christ. Now, ito, idadagdag ko lang kasi napag-usapan namin ni Mrs. Kagabi. Pag-ising namin. Pag-ising ko, sabi ko, Happy birthday, Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> birthday niya kapon. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> birthday niya. Ang, uh, ito ang isang malaking tanong. Bakit yung propeta nila walang picture? Bakit si Jesus Christ may picture at may naitanim sa isip natin kung ano ang itsura niya? Isn't that paganism? Because when the scripture says, No one has seen Yahuwah. Alright? They beheld His glory in John 1.14. But no one has seen Yahuwah. Pero may picture yung Jesus Christ na sinasamba natin noon. Kahit dito sa timeline, may picture siya. Pwede namang ilaw lang yung mukha niya. Pero may picture siya. Eh buti sana kung yung picture niya dito or yung picture na nilalagay is the picture that is pictured in Revelation na ma, me, naputi ang kanyang buho clothed with white and uh, you know there is it's actually different pero ang tanong bakit may picture si Jesus so the question is isn't Jesus the one we know the one we have formed in our mind is pagan eh ang masaklap niyan tinuturo yan sa Sunday school may visual aids ka pa na yung mukha na yun galing sa pagano yung Belen na nakikita natin, nakikita natin, galing sa pagano. Eventually, yung Belen tumayo, naging Santo Nino. <laughs> Nag-peace sign pa. <laughs> o, diba? O, diba? Paano kayo mag-selfie ngayon? Ganun, diba? O, parang Santo Nino lang, diba? Tayo, kumakasabay tayo sa agos ng mundo, eh. Now, ask ourselves that question. Were we worshiping a pagan Jesus before? <laughs> ngayon, ang hirap ngayon i-unlearn kasi when we talk about Jesus Christ, sino nasa isip mo? Si Jesus siya kasi Mama Mary. And this is what the world wants us to know. This is what the deceiver wants us to know. This is what the liar wants us to know. He was a murderer from the beginning. He wants us to die for not knowing the Torah. He wants us to die for not having life. Kaya nga, it's very important now, sabi dyan in verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Yahusha Hamashiach. It's very important to know who Yahusha Hamashiach is. Kasi yan po ang magbibuild ng ating tabernacle. Because if you look back when Yahushua said, search the scriptures, all right? when he says search the scriptures, you search the Tanakh. You search the Torah. We search. We dig in. And then we realize, oh nga no, si Yahushua pala yung minora. Si Yahushua pala yung uh, table of shewbread. Si Yahushua pala yung bawat instrumento na nandoon. He's even the altar of incense that when he was sacrificed, that incense was a sweet savor to Yahuwah. That offering. He's everything in that tabernacle. He's actually the living Torah that's inside the mercy seat. And kung titignan natin yung kabanalan ng tabernacle na yun, yung kagandahan at yung mga materialis na ginagamit, the question is to us now, how are we building our own? tabernacles that Yahuwah may dwell 
with us. Ay sa tingin mo kung lasingdero ka, magdiduel ang Panginoon sa atin? Kung sa tingin natin, babaero tayo, magdiduel ang Panginoon sa atin? If we just continue in our sins, do you really think kung kumain ako ng isang pirasong chicharon, ay magdiduel ang Panginoon sa akin? He abhorred the swine in the temple. Makikita, kung titignan po natin how the Israelites or how the Jews, the Yahudim, tried their best na itaguyod yung temple ng Panginoon when the time that they were experiencing the captivity, that's when they realized the temple was holy. Pero nung kasama nila yung temple, binaliwala lang nila. And it's, it's a reflection for us. How do we build our tabernacle? Let's continue. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones. Now, can you relate this to Exodus? Yes. Now it's very clear. How do I build my own tabernacle? First of all, you offer willingly. How can I build myself? Yung buhay ko, kailangan ko ng oras magbasa ng salita ng Panginoon. Kailangan ko ng oras. I cannot just say I love Yahweh without reading His Word every day. We really have to find time ourselves to search it ourselves. Sabi po dyan, wood, hay, stubble. So makikita natin, anong foundation ang gagamitin mo? Gold, pababa ng pababa yung value. Silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Bakit? I believe as Bezalel was making the tabernacle, meron siyang anong tawag sa refinery. Meron siyang refinery. Because hindi, hindi siya pwedeng gumawa ng ginto. Hindi niya pwedeng i-overlay ng ginto. Kung wala siyang refinery ng ginto. And sabi po ng scripture dyan, our work, being a Betzalel, being a shadow of Yahuwah, our work shall be made manifest. Bakit? Apo yung gagamitin ng Panginoon. Remember, so in Hebrews, it says, Our Elohim, Yahuwah, is a consuming fire. And there are so many parallels in that in the, in the Tanakh, katulad ng pinag-aralan natin about Haftarah on Eliah, Eli, El- Eliyahu, Elijah, ay makikita natin, fire came down from heaven and consumed his offering. So sabi dyan, For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Kaya nga sabi ni Job, di ba? I shall come forth as gold. Let me just go back to this text. Sabi niya in verse 5, For gold is tested in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of humiliation. It won't be an easy journey, brethren. Hindi madali. Hindi madali mag-aral. Nakakaantok. Kailangan ng chocolate. <laughs> Diba? Salamat sa supplier namin ng chocolate. Nung isang linggo, di ba, nag-extend, extend. Nung nagsasalita si Brother Gary, ba't kumakain silang chocolate? Ako hindi lang ako binibigyan. <laughs> Alright. Verse, <laughs> let me continue. Verse 13. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Bawat isa sa atin dadaan sa apoy. Alright. And it will try us. Verse 14, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Bakit? Kung ang ginamit mo kahoy, wood, hay, stubble, madali masunog yan. Eh pagkasunog, naubos, di ba? Bakit? Anong ginamit mo? Yung soul winning ng Romans Road, <laughs> puro kahoy, di ba? Pati soul winning, nagsisinungaling ka. Sinasabi mo yun, na-win mo, 20. Di ba? Wala naman tao doon sa park. <laughs> Di ba? Pati sa CR, nakita mo lang, binilang mo na. Anyway, sabi po dyan in verse 15, But he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. Let me just continue in verse 16. Know ye not that you are the tabernacle of Yahuwah and that the ruach of Yahuwah dwelleth in you. So relate, di ba? 
it relates to what we're reading in Exodus. It tells us Yahuwah wants us, wants the Israelites to build a sanctuary. Why? He wants to dwell with them. So in the same in the Brit Hadashah, it's, uh, Apostle Paul says, you are the temple of Yahuwah and that the spirit of Yahuwah dwelleth in you. Verse 17, if any man defile the tabernacle of Yah, him shall Yahuwah destroy. Sino marirelate natin dito? Nadab and Abihu. Alright? So hindi, to, hindi, hindi po ito separate na sinulat para sa mga new believers in the new generation. Hindi po. This actually, he is relating it to what happened in the book of Exodus. And sabi niya dyan, kung sino man ang mag-defile ng temple ni Yahuwah, yun ay sisirain ng Panginoon. Same with Nadab and Abihu. For the tabernacle of Yah is Kodesh, which tabernacle you are. Sana mas maging careful ngayon tayo sa tabernacle natin. Sana ma- maisip natin yung usapang bagnit. Na ang buhay natin. Actually, the, the, the longer that we've been studying, the more I'm being careful sa mga kinakain. Pati ngayon, tinitingnan ko na pati mga ingredients. Hindi na po ako bumibili ng hotdog. Alright? And all the processed meats. So, ang binibili ko, manok. Yung buong manok. <laughs> Tapos, tingnan nyo din yung mga hinahalo nyo. Kasi minsan, katulad nun, nung nag-usap kami, yung sinigang daw, may shrimp yun. Okay? Yung ibang sinigang, yung nor, tingnan nyo yun. Yung nag- oyster sauce, hindi na tayo nag-oyster sauce. So, marami pong kailangan tingnan. Okay? Napaisip na din ako kasi minsan ginagamit ko yung tom yam. So, tinignan ko. Puro lemongrass lang naman yung nakasulat. Alright. So, mag-ingat na tayo. Because why? He's saying, Apostle Paul is explaining us what was written in Exodus. And basically, sabi niya, kayo ngayon yung tabernacle. Tayo yung tabernacle ng Panginoon. Anong ginto ang meron tayo? Baka pag tinignan natin yung sarili natin, puro wood, hey, stubble. Let's look into ourselves and even the food that we eat. Kasi yung kabuuan, sabi niya ng tao kasi, Iba na ngayon, puro spiritual na ngayon. Ay pambira, sa physical, hindi mo magawa sa spiritual pa. Di ba? So, verse 17, If any man defile the temple of Yahuwah, him shall Elohim dis- Yahuwah destroy. And sabi niya na, for the, te- the tabernacle of Yah is holy, which tabernacle you are. Verse 18, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. And praise Yahuwah, I thought I was wise. Doon sa mga doktrina na alam ko. Kaya nga, pag may nakikipag-argument sa akin, nagwa-wise-wisean din to eh. <laughs> Parang gusto, ako lang na lang sasabihin ko, alam ko na yan eh. Alam na natin yan. Romans Road, kamisado ko yan. Kahit nakapikit. Nakapikit naman talaga <laughs> Nothing in Agua. Verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahuwah. For it is written, He takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, Yahuwah knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And sad to say, may, na, may nakita kung quote. What our nation needs today are preachers. Ay buti sana kung Torah ang tinuturo. Ang tinuturo ng mga preachers ngayon. Paano natin? Uh, remember your preacher. Ay yung remember the Sabbath day, hindi na naalala. Pero yung remember to give your tithes in offering. Remember to give, uh, to pray for your preacher. Ay ba't hindi natin ipanalangin ang ating mga mahal sa buhay na bulag sa katotohanan? These are all, all relate. Walang problema kung ang, sin, ang tinutukoy na preachers ngayon is yung nagtuturo ng Torah. Eh. Kaso ang problema, puro doktrina ng simbahan. So, we really have to be careful. Hindi, ako, hindi ko sinasaming wise ako. Sabi nga ng scripture, if, if you are wise, mag, mas may ginan, maging fool, especially in, in the word of Yahuwah. We have to remain hungry. 
Let me just continue. Verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Let no man glory in men. Why? Because the glory only belongs to Yahuwah. Huwag kayo mag-glory sa akin. Huwag kayo mag-glory kay Brother Gary. Babalik tayo dun sa verse, uh, uh, the previous verses. I'm not of Brother MB. I'm not of Brother uh, Gary. Hindi yun ang pinag-uusapan natin. Lahat tayo kay Yahuwah. Lahat tayo ay ginawa ng Panginoon para bigyan ng glory si Yahuwah. Hindi para sambahin yung pastor. Alright? Mas masaklap nga eh. Mas masaklap pa dun sa pagano na natutunan natin sa Katoliko. Dahil pagdating dun sa natutunan natin at ginawa natin noon, yung pastor na ang sinasamba natin. Pag sinabi natin, Pastor, bakit hindi tayo sabat na go-worship? Ay, hindi natin babaguhin yan dahil, dahil ayon kay San Pedro ay hindi po yan nababago. So makikita po natin na hindi na po doktrina ng salita ng Panginoon. Ang linaw-linaw, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Tapos sabi niya, guard it. Guard it. Bakit? Guard because it will be destroyed. But people have forgotten it. People did not guard it. And eventually, anong ginagard natin? Yung sinabi ng Romano that Sunday is the day of worship. Verse 22, whether of Brother Gary or Brother Envy or San Pedro <laughs> or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are the Messiahs and the Messiah is Yahuwas. Napakalinaw po niya. Kanino si Messiah? Kay Yahuwa pa din. Alright? And you are Mashiachs and Mashiach is Yahuwas. So yung hierarchy, kanino babalik? Kay Yahuwa. Hindi po humihinto kay Jesus Christ. Kasi what we have been taught na si Jesus Christ lahat, lahat naging kay Jesus Christ na and eventually, pati yung Sunday na kay Jesus Christ na, pati yung Christmas kay Jesus Christ na, pati yung Resurrection Sunday kay Jesus Christ na what we failed to see He had His commandments laid out we just didn't follow and now, we're going back to the real Messiah pati nga yung Messiah, tsaka yung Yahusha, tsaka Jesus may na offend but we're just trying to point the real Messiah in our studies And I hope as we have studied, as we have read about gold, silver, and precious stones, I hope that's how we build our own tabernacles. Anong purpose ng gathering? For us to build the tabernacle. Kaya may edification of the ecclesia. Because we edify one another through gathering, through assembling. Bakit? Anong pinag-aaralan natin? how to build the tabernacle according how he commanded us to do it. Alright? So I hope malinaw po yung pagdugtong natin ng Brit Hadasha with the Old Testament para hindi po tayo mal- malabuan dun sa mga doktrina ng mundo ito. Brother Gary, anything you would like to add? Ah... Uh... Mas kaya po na matutunan yung mga, yung mga, yung totoong salita ng Panginoon. Yung mga natututunan natin ngayon mga kapatid. Uh, napaka, napakalawak lang nung, nung, nung kapangyarihan, nung talino, nung wisdom ng Panginoon. And praise Yahuwah kasi po ngayon is pinapaunawa niya sa atin. Alright. Uh, dito sa portion natin na to ngayon, ngayong Friday na to pinag-aaralan natin. Uh, kung ano ibig sabihin ng Ecclesia, kung ano yung purpose ng pagbu- pag- pag-gather natin, yung pagsasama-sama natin ngayon, yung pagkoconnect nyo online, ang panunood nyo ng mga programa po natin, is to build the tabernacle. Pero dito nga, sa pinag-aaralan natin sa Corinthians, sabi niya, eh, nagkagulo-gulo. Eh, mga bata pa kasi kayo. Okay? Sinasabi niya, mga babes kayo, kaya nagkakagulo, tinan nyo, nagkakagulo-gulo kayo, nagkakahati-hatian kayo and nagkakaroon ng division which is dapat hindi naman talaga sinasabi ng pang sinasabi sinasabi ng Panginoon dito is dapat buo eh kasi iisa lang naman ang Panginoon pero bakit nagkakahiwa-hiwalay yan po ang ginawa ng relihiyon sa atin right just to give you a background uh, yung church na pinag-uusapan natin kanina bakit ngayon napupunta yung glory sa AABBC CCBB 
KKK, bakit napupunta yung glory ngayon sa simbahan? Saan po nagsimula yan? Definitely, nagsimula yan sa Roma. But kung titatrack back nyo, from Roma, saan ang galing si King James? Si King James is the king of England. Bago nagkaroon ng King James, meron pong King Henry. Okay? Bago ang King James, meron King Henry. Sino si King Henry? Siya rin po yung hari ng England. Alright? Ano siya? Sumasamba po siya sa sinasamba ng Roma. Alright? There was a time na gusto niyang mag-divorce sa kanyang asawa, si King Henry at si King Isabel. Pero hindi pinayagan ng Roma. At yan po nagsimula ang protestante. Queen Isabel. Queen, Queen, Queen. Queen, uh, Queen Isabel pala. <laughs> Babae po yun, Queen Isabel. Alright? So, dyan po nagsimula ang protestante. Alright, you may, you may find it na medyo nagkakatuwaan po tayo, masaya tayo nag-aaral. Masaya po talagang matutunan yung salita ng Panginoon. But when it comes to the word of Yahuwah, seryoso po tayo dito sa ginagawa natin, mga kapatid. Ha? Huwag, kayong, huwag nyong mamimisinterpret yung tawanan natin, yung nag enjoy tayo mag-aaral. Alright? But we are very zero pagdating sa pagdat sa aral ng salita ng Panginoon. Alright, going back sa, sa story. Si King Henry at si Queen Isabel is gusto nilang mag-divorce. Gusto, gusto, gusto ni King Henry na iwanan yung asawa niya pero ang Roma hindi pumayag. Diyan po nagsimula ang protestante. Alright, so he is the King of England. Diyan po nagsimula ang Anglican Church which is the Church of England. Diyan din po nanggaling si King James na inauthorize niya na yung na yung glory or yung yung, yung lahat ng pag-uusapan niyo pag nabanggit yung salitang kahal wag niyo papalitan yung church kasi dapat sa church of england yung glory okay so just a small background kung bakit naging church yung ecclesia and those information available po yan sa napakadali na po ng information ngayon hanapin niyo po and aralin niyo po and mauunawaan natin saan ang galing yung mga anak 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 Kasama na po dyan ang Baptist. Alright. Now, moving forward dito sa second sa 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Sinasabi niya rito, kaninong tabernacle ka? Alright. Which temple ye are? Yan po yung last part niya sa verse 17. Okay. Now, if I may go back sa verse, sa verse 13, sabi dyan, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall be clear it, because it shall be revealed by fire, And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So susubukin kung paano mo binibuild yung tabernacle, yung tabernacle natin, yung sarili natin, paano natin pinuput at pinaayos sa harapan ng Panginoon. And napakaganda po yung binasa natin sa sira kanina. Kasi that's how you will, you will be tested. Alright? Balik tayo dun kay Job. Kasi yung verse 19, galing po ito sa sulat dun sa Tanak, alright? Sa, sa book of Job. Job chapter 5, yung sinabi niya na for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahuwah, with Elohim. It is, comes from, from Job chapter 5. Buksan niyo pa. Job chapter 5. Kaya sabi niya, it is, for it is written, he take it the wise in their own craftiness. So pag, pag, sina, pag sinabi dyan sa breath hada siya na it is written, is galing po yan sa scriptures, which is the Tanakh. Job chapter 5, ang sabi po dyan, I'll start reading in verse 8. I would seek unto Yahuwah or Elohim, and unto Elohim would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number, who give it rain upon the earth and send it waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that below, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness. Yan po yung verse 13 na makikita nyo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19. I'll continue. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noondays as in the night, but he saveth he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. All right. Pag 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 naaralan niyo to po, na basa niyo po yung 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 revelation, magkita niyo na parang sinasabi niyo rito sa 
chapter 5 ng Job talks about revelation. All right? So the poor hath hope and iniquity, stop it from out. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahuwah or Elohim corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. You will be tried. You will be tested in fire. Oh, all right. I'll continue. For he make it sore and bind it up. He wounded and his hands make whole again. For he make it sore and bind it up. He wounded and his hands make whole. Sino yan? Think about it. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Saan nangyari to? Read the revelation. Okay? Pagdating ng pitong trumpet, wala ka na dito. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Hanggang pababa po, it talks about kung ano, kung ano yung sinasabi. The same sa revelation. Alright, now going back, dito sa chastening or pag, pagpapalo sa atin or pagtitest sa atin in fire. Pagdating po sa Revelation, chapter 3 na, at kung naalala nyo yung pinag-usapan natin about the seven ecclesia, ang sabi niya sa last na ecclesia, which is the Laodiceans, chapter 3, verse 18, ito po ang sabi niya. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Tried in the fire. Right? Sabi ng Panginoong Yahushua, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Tingnan nyo kung ano yung ginawa ko. Bumili kayo sa akin ng gold. Not the gold of this world, but the gold that I laid out from the foundation of the world. Tumakita ninyo na ito yung gold na hinahanap ko. Alright? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Okay? Na maging mayaman ka sa harap ng Panginoon. Ito yung gold na picture ng ating ng, ng tabernacle na pinagawa niya kala Moshe, ito yung gold na picture ng, ng temple na pinagawa niya kay Solomon at ito yung gold na hinahanap niya sinasabi niya I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire and what is that gold it's our character how we build our temple ourselves sa harapan ng Panginoong Yahuwah and white raiment that's a character dapat spotless, dapat blameless, dapat walang halong baboy, dapat walang halong kung ano-anong abomination dyan sa temple natin. That thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Okay? And anoint thine eyes with thyself that thou mayest see. So sabi niya, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase it. You will be tested. Dadaan tayo sa pagsubok. Katulad ng, katulad ng sinasabi sa 1 Corinthians. Dadaan tayo sa mga yan. Katulad ng sinasabi sa sira. But, why do you think the tabernacle should be gold? Kasi pag sinunog yan, lalabas ang totoo. Kahoy ba yan o gold? So, let's be ready. Alright? Dapat handa tayo na sumagot sa mga magtatanong. Dapat handa tayo na ishare sa kanila yung mga natututunan natin. And the only way to do that, kailangan po sabay-sabay tayo mag-aral. Kailangan po sabay-sabay tayong lumalago. Alright? So, huwag niyong i-ignore yung mga, yung mga articles na, na, na sinesend po ng ating, ng ating preachers. Okay? Basahin natin. May mga part na hindi tayo maintindihan. Let's ask questions. Magtanong tayo. Magtanong po tayo. Kasi tapos na itong tayo sa part na pupunta ka, pupunta ka na simbahan na hindi mo alam kung ano yung gagawin mo. Tatayo sila, tatayo ka din. Kakanta sila, kakanta ka din. Papalakpak sila, papalakpak ka din. Dapat alam natin, if you really an Israelite, because you need to be an Israelite, you need to be grafted in, in the family of Israelites, kilalanin natin kung sino yung Panginoon natin. Yung Panginoon ni Abraham, Panginoon ni Yatsak, ang Panginoon ni Yaakob, ni Israel. Kilala natin siya. Dapat alam natin kung sino talaga siya. And siya po ang Panginoong Yahuwah. And si Yahuwah siya. Siya po ang Panginoong Yahuwah. And the Holy Spirit, the Ruwa Kapodis, siya po ang Panginoong Yahuwah. There is one God, Adonai Elohino, Adonai Ikan. There's only one God, and that's Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Sir? Amen, amen. Pag nag-amen yung katabi mo, nag-amen ka din. <laughs> now, let me finish with this brother Danny brother Ivan anything you would like to add before we conclude <laughs> all right <laughs> let's so uh, let's go back to first Corinthians 
First Corinthians chapter 4. Okay. So now that was not in First Corinthians chapter 3, but obviously these were written without chapters, and it's always a continuation. So chapter 4, I'll finish with verses 1 and 2. Sorry. Dagdag ko lang, sir. Yung comment ni Sis Alma, ang ganda kasi nung sinabi niya sa Romans Road, eh, papunta daw po yun ng Roma. <laughs> Actually, oh my. napansin nga namin yun, nung sinulat ko yun, tapos na-realize namin, oh nga, no? Romans Road. So, ang Romans Road, natural sa papunta sa Roma. <laughs> Naloko tayo ng big time, no? <laughs> All right. In this so, road is naging Romans Road, papunta ng Roma. Exactly. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense that it's going, it actually leads us back to Rome. Okay? And it has led us back. But praise Yahuwah, we're digging the old paths. Uh, Actually, before I end with 1 Corinthians chapter 4, balik ulit tayo sa Philippians chapter 2. Kasi, I'm just amazed how these things are connected to each other. And especially when we get more understanding about the Tanakh. Uh, hawakan nyo yung Corinthians, dyan tayo magtatapos. So kanina, binasa natin yung verse 11, that every tongue should confess that Yahuwah is Yahusha Hamashiach to the glory of Yah. Abba. Wherefore, verse 12, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Obeyed what? Yeah, obeyed what? So basically, there's something to obey that we have to know what it is. So it's basically obeying the commandments, the way of Yah. Sabi niya, hindi pakitang tao. But now, much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. So we have our own responsibilities to exercise, to strengthen. Okay. And sabi dyan, you work out your own salvation. Hindi pag sinabi ko sa'yo, maniwala ka kay Jesus Christ, ligtas ka na. And wala ka nang kailangan gawin. Yun yung masaklap na phrase na sinasabi natin. Alright? Pero, alam natin sa sarili natin, hindi yun yun eh. May gagawin ka. Kailangan mo may, may gawin. Hindi yung tinanggap mo, manginginom ka pa din, eh, dahil naniwala ka sa pangalan, okay ka na? Well, it doesn't sync with the Old Testament. Yahoo, I know. So sabi niya, work out your own salvation, own, tigitigi sa tayo, kanya-kanya, with fear and trembling with humbleness and nanginginig pa. Na pag nakita po natin yung mga Israelites kung paano sila nag-offer, dahil nga may kasalanan sila, remember? Nung nagkasala sila sa Kittisa, they offered to a golden calf. They worshiped the golden calf. And when the, the covenant was renewed, reset to them, they worked out their own salvation with fear and trembling. They offered with fear and trembling they serve with fear and trembling. Alright? Sabi dyan, For it is Yah which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So para kanino yung ginagawa natin? Para sa Panginoon. Remember, hindi ito pakitaan ng gilas. Hindi ito pakitang tao. Yahuwah knows our hearts and Yahuwah will judge us. Kaya nga sabi niya, you work out your own kaligtasan. Alright? You work out mo yung sarili mong kaligtasan. And we're not talking about work salvation, but works is required. Okay? We all know that by believing in the name of Yahuwah, katulad ng sinabi, na, sinabi dyan sa verse 9 to 11, that we will bow and our tongues will confess that Yahuwah is Yahusha HaMashiach. We understand that Yahuwah is the Messiah. Anong ginagawa ng Messiah? To save us. Diba? That's the meaning of His name, Yeshua. Yeshua means salvation. Yahusha is salvation. So, basically, it's just pointing us back, anong salvation? Balik kayo sa gawa ng Panginoon. 
balik kayo sa gawi ng Panginoon, sa batas ng Panginoon, sa mishpatim ng Panginoon, balik tayo doon because that is life. And that's how we work out our own Yeshua, our own salvation. So kung babalik ngayon tayo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 4, ngayon na pag-usapan natin who Yahusha is, what his purpose is, sabi ngayon in chapter 4 verse 1, <coughs> Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Mashiach. Bakit? Kanino binigay ang power? Kay Mashiach. Kay Yahusha. And Mashiach will come again. And eventually, sabi niya, kayo ngayon ay mga ministro ni Mashiach and stewards of the mystery of Yahuwah. Okay? Mysteries ng scripture. Mysteries ng tabernacle. All right. Verse 2. My ending words. My parting verses. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Alright? We have to learn how to faithful. Faithful to the end, working out our own salvation. With fear and trembling. Hindi yung pupunta ka ng church, kinagabihan, lasing ka. Di ba? Walang fear and trembling Walang fear and trembling. Now, it gives us a better illustration. How did they make that tabernacle according to Yahuwah commanded? How do we make our own tabernacle? By our own works? No. According to how Yahuwah commands us. What's His command? The Ten Commandments. What's his, what, how, what does He want us to do? The Torah. He wants us to follow the Mishpatim. He wants us to follow the Moedim, the Sabbath. This is His commandments. And He wants us to be faithful in all of these things. Not soul winning, not singing in the choir, not in the things that we have been taught na parte ng simbahan. All of these, I'll, I'll say this, all of these are wood, hay, and stubble. Hindi ko sinasabing masama umawit sa Panginoon. Hindi ko sinasabing masama mag soul win if it's in the right perspective. Just like what I posted, the soul winning today of the churches is not a perspective of Yahusha when he gave the Great Commission. Hindi niya sinabing maniwala, sabihin niyo sa kanila, maniwala sila sa akin na ako ang Panginoon. His purpose was to point us all back to the Father, back to the way, back to His Torah. At yun ang Great Commission. And if we're, if we're living the Torah, it's easy for us to preach the Torah. And it's pretty easy, much more easier for us to say that Yahusha is my Adonai because He's the one who fulfilled the Torah na sinusunod ko sa buhay ko. Alright? So I hope that makes it clear sa ating pinag-aralan. Let the Ruach HaKodesh guide us into all truth. Brother Gary, please close us in a word of prayer. All right. I hope marami po kayong natutunan ngayong umaga. And let's go to Yahuwah. Prayer. Father Yahuwah in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We praise and thank you, Father, first of all, sa buhay na walang hanggan na pinagkalob niyo sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagpapadala inyong salita ng inyong buhay na salita. Tumbos ang aming mga pagkakamali. Itinuro sa amin yung tamang pagsunod sa inyong Panginoon. Thank you so much, Father, sa kaliwanagan ng inyong salita ngayon. Sa pagbukas ng aming mga isipan. Sa pagpapakita sa amin ng mga mysteries ng inyong salita. And we know, Father, hindi po lahat ng tao ang kakaroon ng ganitong kaliwanagan. Hindi, hindi lahat ng tao binibigay niyo po ito. But salamat, Panginoon, ibinibigay niyo po ito sa amin. And I pray, Father, Yahuwah, na lahat po ng natututunan namin sa ikliseyang ito ang maging liwanan sa mundo, Panginoon, na ibahagi namin sa lahat ng kakilala namin sa pamilya namin. Dalangin ko, Panginoon, kung paano niyo pinakita, kung paano i-build yung tabernacle na itinuro niyo kay Moshe, kung paano niyo i-build yung tabernacle na itinuro niyo sa amin sa Brett Hadasha yung aming sariling tabernacle na dapat lahat ng mayroon dito is gold. Na dapat sa buhay namin, 
walang halong dumi. Spotless. Thank you, Father, sa pagpapakita sa amin. Na hindi po natapos ang lahat ng namatay sa krus ang inyong anak. But itinuro nyo sa amin na dapat hanggang kamatayan matuto kami sumunod sa inyo. Salamat, Panginoon, sa pagpapakita nito sa amin. Salamat sa pagmamahal sa amin. At hindi nyo po hinayaan na malasing kami ng tuluyan sa Babylon. Nilabas nyo po kami, Panginoon, sa Babylon hanggat may panahon pa kami. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat sa Ekleseya na ginamit niyo, Panginoon. Maraming salamat sa technology na ginagamit mo. Maraming salamat sa mga kapatid namin na papatuloy po na binibigyan niyo po ng kaliwanagan ng inyong salita. And I pray, Father, lahat ng mga ito, lahat ng mga ito, Panginoon, na ishare namin sa, sa iba pang mga tao. Ang kayo po ang pumilo sa kanila, tanggalin yung mga veil ng puso ng bawat isa na hindi nakakakilayan ng tuluyan sa inyo. Turuan niyo po kami magkaroon ng humble heart na lahat ng mga natututunan namin hindi maging dahilan para maging mataas kami. Magkos Panginoon, ituro nyo sa amin yung totoong pagmamahal sa kapwa na lahat ng natututunan namin na ibahagi namin. Nang may pagmamahal at hindi para maitaas yung aming mga sarili, kundi para maitaas ang inyong pangalan. Wala pong iba. Salamat sa lahat ng ito, Panginoon. Ang dalangin ko, Panginoon, sa aming pagwahiwalay ngayon, I pray, Father, for your protection para sa bawat isa, sa buong pamilya po namin na hindi po namin kasama sa mga pamilya namin, Panginoon, na hanggang ngayon hindi pa, rin, hindi pa nauunawaan that they go, to go through in the process. I pray, Father, gamitin niyo po yung buhay namin. And sa mga, sa mga sakit na kumakalat ngayon, Panginoon, I pray, Father, para sa protection, para, para, para sa bawat pamilya, na hindi po namin kasama. Gayun na rin po kami rito na sa ibang bansa na magkatrabaho. Dalangin po Panginoon ang inyong protection. Salamat po. Salamat sa lahat ng ito. Patawarin kami Panginoon kung may mga pagkukulang pa rin kaming nagagawa. May mga bagay kaming hindi nauunawaan. May mga pagkakataon na, may, na nakakagawa kami ng pagkakamali sa inyo. I pray Father, turuan niyo po kami. Ipaunawa niyo po ito sa amin. Ang dalangin po Panginoon. Matutunan na namin ito kung paano, yung, kung paano kayo sambahin sa Espiritu at Katotohanan yung totoong pananambahan sa iyo. Salamat po sa lahat. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa inyong dakilang pangalan. Yahweh. Sa inyong salita ng nagkatawang tao, ang aming tagapagligtas, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Thank you mga kapatid. And uh, Amen. Amen. just wanted to add this, yung hmm. Romans Road ay hindi lang po nagtatapos sa Roma. Pabalik po yan sa Babylon. Kasi it's a foundational truth going back to Babel in Genesis chapter 5. It's going back to Babylon. Kaya nga po, pagbalik sa Revelation, Babylon pa din. Hindi naman sinabing Roma eh. Pero if you go back to Daniel, makikita po natin yung sequence of events ng dynasties. And now we are in the mixed nations at napakalinaw lang po na maintindihan that all goes back to Babylon. All right. And Babylon is confusion. Pati picture ng Lucas ay confused na tayo. So let's all just continue reading, searching, and I hope that we all learn something today. All right? Very, very profound na makita natin to in the Brit Hadasha na ito pala yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. Hindi pala siya gumagawa ng sarili niyang doktrina. Ito pala yung kayamanan ng mysteries ng kanyang salita. Alright. So, thank you, brethren. Uh, patawarin nyo kami kung ayaw mag-live uh, sa Facebook. But I hope you were able to join us in YouTube. And we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your preparations for the Shabbat. And uh, magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Bye-bye. Shalom. 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 Shalom.